Mathematics is a fundamental part of our everyday lives, and without it, we would be in serious trouble. It helps shape our world and the way we behave in it. Let's take a look at a very exaggerated example of this. This is Mark. He cannot math. Because of his inability to process numbers, he set his alarm clock for 6pm, thinking the 18 on his alarm clock meant 18 minutes before he was due to go to work. But Mark was woken by the coldness of his room, because he didn't know how to pay his gas bills. Ever wonder why a tube of toothpaste is cylindrical? Well, it's because we want to maximise the pressure inside the tube to be able to squeeze toothpaste out of. This can be defined as having the least surface area to a fixed volume. Maths can help us prove that for all prisms, the surface area is proportional to the square root of n multiplied by the tangent of pi divided by n, where n represents the number of sides of a polygon for a prism. As n increases, the surface area decreases, and eventually our prism becomes circular. Mark is driving to work now. Others stay perfectly within the speed limit, however Mark could not read the signs. The speedometer of a car also uses maths. It's able to calculate the speed of a car. First, it multiplies the number of rotations its wheels make by 2 pi r, where r represents the radius of the wheel. This gives us a value for distance. Then, it would be set to count the number of rotations over a very short amount of time to obtain a value for speed. That's why it's dangerous to use the wrong size wheels on a car, because the speedometer will be incorrect. Mark works with Matthew. Matthew is a prime example of how people use maths in their everyday lives. The two took two to the conference room, when it came time for them to present their weekly reports to their boss. Matthew showed off his glorious slideshow. The big boss was impressed. We can use statistical values such as the Pearson's correlation coefficient and the standard deviation of data sets to create trend lines on scatter plots. Maths can help us create trend lines on scatter plots like these. They can help us predict future values as well as giving us an indication of rate of growth. Now it was time for Mark to present. This is why the average median is It was lunchtime, and Matthew was lining up at his work canteen to purchase lunch, which he did with ease and took advantage of a 10% discount on the potato cake. Now it was Mark's turn. He asked Mary, the canteen lady, for uh, six potato cakes, uh, 14 hash browns, uh, 32 potato gems, 40 party pies, 110. This went on for some time. Due to Mark's inability to do simple mental math in his head, he forgot that he only had a five dollar note that he picked up off the ground last week. But Mark could not count the amount he received, therefore did not realise he got less than what he asked for. Mark had finished work now, and it was home time for him. Mark went to get into his car, only to realise that it had been towed away three hours earlier. But of course, he didn't realise this because he didn't understand the permitted time period on the tow zone sign. So, Mark walked home. Mark finally got home, and decided to make pizza for dinner. It took Mark 20 minutes to luckily find the recipe in his cookbook, because he couldn't read the table of contents, nor the page numbers. When he tried to follow the recipe, he did the steps in the wrong order, and also added the wrong amount of everything. When it came to adding tomato paste, he didn't know how to convert 500 grams, as displayed on his bottle, to the 0.2 kilograms specified in the book. So he just added the whole thing. Mark's pizza ended up being totally baked because he had set the temperature of his oven to 500 degrees Celsius for 10 hours when his cookbook only specified 250 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. It would have been worse if Mark had not mistaken his alarm clock in his bedroom for his oven timer going off. Mark, who had no concept of proportionality, ran his blade through his pizza unevenly. So later that night, having no concept of time, Mark headed to bed at 6am in the morning, setting his alarm for 6pm. After a typically disastrous day of no math, Mark was awoken by the coldness of his room. 